My name is Tamika Williams, Public Safety Business Operations Manager. Dave Torcell, EMS Chief. Crystal Vidura, HR Director. Kristen Hill, Council Attorney's Office. Uh, Chad Stimmel, uh, Local Vice President. Amy Hurd, Local uh, Chief Shop Steward. Diamond Melvin, IAP Secretary. Richard Anderson, IAP Negotiator. Michael Morosco, National Representative, IAP. Okay, yes, yes, yes. All right, so we just like to kind of do the same thing as, uh, as previously with what you all did. If you okay. presented your all stuff right. to us, we'll kind of go through each one. Right. If you have any questions, anything that's not clear, or you'd like us to further explain or identify, uh, you know, have any discussion about it before we go on to the next so we don't get lost all right. in, our, in our articles. So, let's, uh, all right, so the first one is Article 2. Um, no, it's Article 1. We didn't have any changes. For we didn't have any changes. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I, they're, they're, just, just, just let me clear I'm only going by the ones that made changes to. <coughs> okay, you're just going to go through the ones that you're proposing change. Yes, change any, anything that we've presented to you or you've okay. presented to us, just the ones with the changes, basically. All right. if, and if there's any questions, please feel free to bring them up as we go through. Um, okay, so Article 2, um, second paragraph. Um, you see there the bargaining unit as certified by the uh, Public Employee Relations Committee shall include the following classifications. We had that discussion previously about right. those, those classifications. That language was unnecessary, so it was just stricken from that because we... we just we, referencing the certification. Yes, sir. So we just yeah. met it, so we just took <coughs> that language out. Um, okay. Article 3, General Provisions. You good, Mr. Marasco? I see you typing. Do you need a minute? Yeah, no, I'm okay. good. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so Article 3, General Provisions. Uh, the first one under there is 3.05, accommodation with BCC policy. Uh, we are agreeable to changing the 15 days to 30 days. Uh, by, by the way, before we move on, please, those please. that you propose, either not proposing any change or as in Article 2, the change is something we previously discussed and agreed to, we're fine. We can tentatively agree to Articles 1, Article 1, and Article 2. Okay, gotcha. I just want to make sure we're covered just so everybody knows yeah, that we yeah, didn't skip yeah. over anything. Yeah, and just to jump in, Mr. Moreno was unable to join us today. Uh, if we have any TAs, you guys can sign off on them, and I will present them to him first thing tomorrow okay. morning. Yeah. So but but we are prepared to TA yeah, those Article 1 and Article 2. He's not here to sign, but he, he will. Okay. So anyway, section 3.05, we are uh, we are agreeable to changing the 15 to the 30 days. Uh, we do not want to change uh, the term consult to the word negotiate. Uh, Article 4, union rights uh, underneath 4.04, dues deduction, obviously with the changes now with the direct deposit uh, with legislation, each of those uh, moving down, uh, which the language was just stricken to reflect the appropriate change. Uh, and that goes along with 4.05, 4.06, uh, and 4.07. Uh, 4.08, orientation. 
The addition of the language upon request, the county will provide the union with the name and date of hire for any new employee whose job classification is included in the bargaining unit. We added that. We are good with that language. Okay. I know I'm talking fast, Mr. Marasco. Are you good? No, you're great. Okay, I'm just making sure as you type it away, I don't want to go too fast. Um, 4.05, um, union leave. I want to give you a chance just to kind of look at that as how it's written. Uh, but this is the 120 hours requested of union leave. Okay. Based on the language that was placed in there, and you'll see there's actually, um, there is a, um, there's actually some legal uh, in there of another case of how this applies, where you see the uh, Allen versus Miami Dade College Board of Trustees to kind of give relevance to how this works and, and where it is elsewhere. We are, we are good with the 120 hours. Um, Touch on some highlights here. Pretty much mirrors the language. It, it's it, yeah, it's 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 mirrored language. Uh, you know, the 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 the, uh, the hours will not roll over. Okay. Um, we are not agreeable to then using um, personal accrued leave for uh, for union leave. Uh, I don't really think there's anything else in there. It's just kind of more of a of a defined definition of, of how it would work, but we are agreeable to the 120 hours. Article five, grievance procedures. Um, as we discussed, going down to 5.03, under the procedure section, starting at uh, letter E, um, first, all the way down, as we discussed previously, the changing words of, after, um, we're yeah. just changing yeah. all that. Yeah. Um, we are also good through the entirety of it with the change to the 10 days consistently all throughout. It makes everything so much easier without having multiple days in there. Um, we, we do not want to change removing step one, the oral discussion, because a lot of what happens in the operations uh, when it comes to grievance processes, that's where it starts. So we want to make sure we're not bypassing that. Um, nor do we want to take step two to go, I'm sorry, step one, number two, step one to go straight to the public safety director. It still needs to maintain within our chain of command. So we are not agreeable to that change either. Um, I think it goes down pretty far. All of the changes, again, are the words after. And number 10, however, Number four is, that is on there. Letter B. Four B is in This is just little. notifying. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. FMC asks them who was selected. And, yeah. and okay. Push a button and, and right. it's done. So okay. I figured two business days is definitely enough. But I mean, I'm going to whatever. I agree that to perform that function 10 days is probably. I'm, a bit much. I, I, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the time frame is short. It's two days, but I agree that 10 days is. That was business completely, days. Completely. Yeah. Days. Completely unnecessary. Although you guys didn't. You guys retain the language that days means calendar days. We had proposed to change it. Otherwise specified, yeah. yeah. The, the, okay, does it through, say? Through the rest of our contracts, it's it's all calendar days, so we want to maintain calendar days. And right, the but does it say this was days here? Yes, it does. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that wouldn't say us. Okay, that's right. Okay, all right, okay. That's FMCS timeline. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Article 8 leaves um, starting oh, Hold on, let me. No, nope, go ahead, please. please. Yeah, no. Yep, do what you need to do. Absolutely. No changes in Article 6 and 7. Um, uh, we did, I, I know I asked this last time, I'm going to ask one more time on seniority because we really, we're doing this across the county, not just for, for your unit, is trying to clarify seniority for our departments. And I know I asked, and I think you said yes, it's inclusive of our leave time. But what about? 
and, and we just want to try to be clear all the way across if you had a dispatcher who then went and became an EMT are time we, and grade first so your time as if you move to EMT you would be looking at your time as your EMT as your first level of seniority so time in class essentially right and then okay. broken by your time with the county if there was a discrepancy or needed a, a tiebreaker yeah but that was only we limited that time in, in, in grade to voluntary and involuntary shift assignments right but any right. other thing that would be given consideration if seniority could be used it would at least be considered in that capacity okay because we didn't propose to change the definition of seniority we're not no and we didn't only either but we're, we're, just, we're just trying to get clarification to make sure we understand we do and involuntary shift assignments right that's what how we had worded it in our proposal yes but you're saying something different now which is contrary to what we just told us. Yeah. So okay. just, just right. to make sure yeah. I understand, uh, let me give you an example that's yeah. kind of relevant that, that happens now. So let's say we have an EMS employee that's been with the department 15 years, right? They're an EMT. Right. They go to paramedic school, they change classification. Now they're a paramedic. They are now the most junior paramedic in the department. That's how we're, so one is the classification, right? right? So in right. classification, I'm junior as a paramedic. But then department seniority, as you're talking about, I've got those 15 years of service. Right. That's how we're, just right. making sure that's how we're viewing that, correct? Is that yes. what you mean? Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify that, that's all. Yeah. Okay. And then <coughs> classification seniority, <coughs> under our proposal, that would be applicable in a voluntary or involuntary shift assignment change. Correct. But for no yeah. other purpose. Um, later, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. Because in terms of, you know, accruing PTO, we have, I, Right. That's 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 the PTO is completely separate because that's based on a leave anniversary date and that's based on time with the county as right. a whole. Okay, so not, not, a not just necessarily with EMS. Correct. Okay. Correct. And that's yes. why we, we go back to clarifying seniority again across the county because also with the, a PTO mm -hmm. approval, if you were with the sheriff's office and came over at this point in time, the county is accepting that. And, and section one reflects that because it says BCC employment. You know, mm -hmm. yes, from, yes, so but it says data yeah, higher in BCC, in BCC employment, employment. So we right? We were wanting to clarify that it's actually time in class for seniority for shift assignments. For shift assignments, that's what we propose to have it applied to shift assignments. But when we're putting a seniority date in our system, uh -huh. the date for seniority that should apply would be time in class or. For what purpose would you yeah, I know, say the would the county would, yeah. be using seniority for? Because there's a departmental level. Yeah. It's because more, for, it's yeah. more departmental. Because for PTO or vacation time, that's if it was limited different. to time in class, that, I mean, that, that no, there's, no, yeah. that's completely there's different. Not that's a right. completely different date altogether. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Why that's why it needs to be specified, I think, in Article 6 as to which definition of seniority applies to which circumstances. Well, that's kind of why we're trying to get uh, yeah. more clarification yeah. as to which, yeah. because, you know, for example, um, I'm just trying to think of, maybe not applying directly to EMS, but let me give the example to kind of clarity on the department versus position, right? So when I was with IFF, if you have two people that both test for lieutenant, let's say, right? They get the exact same score on everything, right? everything considered they would then to go to the tie go well which one of them has been here longer because they're both from the lowest level class you know classification so there is no well i already i'll rank you i'm in a higher class or this or that it's how do we figure out who goes to this next level when you both got the exact same score on the written the exact same score on the tactical the exact same score on the practical it's like how do, how do we somebody's got to be a winner because there can't be a tie there's only one spot left right um that's why we're trying to get clarification but where is uh, when when you mentioned the, the piece about the um, the shift assignments, that that's written. That's in an hour. That's an hour proposal on Article Six. Correct. <coughs> that's um, not so currently in the contract. It's this one. Right. I'm looking yeah. at the wrong one. I just wanted to see how you yeah. have that written. There it is. Because they're the battle of the water. Seniority is limited to anything you should be for everything. 
authority later anything, on. Anything, anytime anything so yeah. would ever be used, Maybe there needs to be, it's dependent on whether it's a classification. Okay, so how long you've been in the county or what's a classification, how long you've been in grade. So this and if they open up, let's just say they open up a position. Okay. All right, let's go. I got you. That's good. For Nito Key and they want to put a truck out there. That's, that's And you, who wants to be? So um, we'll finish going through these, and then each side we can caucus, and maybe we can come, right. come to a yeah. seniority. Sure. Yeah. I mean, listen, obviously we're going to be able to come up with sure. the best way to deal with it, but we, and I agree, we clearly yeah. do and need to. We'll, we'll just finish going through these, and then we'll take yeah. a caucus, yeah. and each side yeah. can discuss yeah. seniority further. So, so just to clarify, the two things being separate, because I'm sorry, I was looking at two separate copies. Right. I'm looking at this one and the one you proposed. So. Um, we'll get the clarification when we caucus on seniority, but as to your proposal number two under that, we um, we are not agreeable to that for the purposes of shift assignments. Six right now. No changes to no changes to seven. Okay, Article Eight under leaves, eight point zero two. Uh, just some language change there. Annual leave is accrued rather than accumulated. Um, but no changes to the actual amounts because that is consistent. And consistent, well, consistent with the county, but at the same time, once you guys hit that sixth year, you're already above what the county accrues. The county only gets 10 at that point in time. Uh, language changes in letter B, um, just some removal of the titles for the section as well as in the third Third sentence down, um, non-pay change to unpaid status. Uh, and then of course, uh, you'll see the removal there because that's January 1, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, the, and, and that's been the practice for, yeah. I went back, I think, what I say, eight years? Yeah, so just the removal of the, you know, based on the bargaining units, play the title, that's no longer. Uh, C, just the change of the, the title of the doc, of, of the, uh, that particular section, no changes in the language. Uh, D, the same thing, removal, however, the last sentence, well, the second sentence, not less than seven days. And then, of course, we do this now, which we're fine with, the underlined section, requests for annual leave will be granted on a first-come, first-served basis, we're fine with that as well. Um, letter E, again, just re removing the titles of each section to, to make it clearer, but no changes to the language. The same for F. Uh, G, same thing, just removing the title, no language change. H, that's the January 1, that's the change with the language there versus the anniversary of employee, that's 8.03, um, letter A. Uh, the addition request for sick leave shall be made not less than 24 hours prior to the start of the employee scheduled shift. Sick leave uh, may be utilized in quarter hour increments. I have a question. Yeah, I do too. Go ahead. We have to call out 24 hours in advance. <laughs> Is that supposed to just say four hours? That doesn't change there. Yeah, something's done. So let me, let me ask a question. Is this intended to, because here's what it doesn't say. This says requests for sick leave, right? So if someone calls in sick, they're saying I'm sick. But we have what is called scheduled sick leave. Correct. So maybe we need some clarification on, we need you, to, if you're going to schedule sick leave for an appointment, a, a surgery, or whatever, we need, and, and I think that's what the intent of that is. But if there's It has no, to be what the but, intent is. But there's no yeah. clarity right, there. Right, right, right. So, um, we just want to go over the rest and we'll get the language for that. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying and I agree with you. That's, that's, I don't think that's what that was intended to say. Yeah. We're missing a piece there. Um, letter C, layoffs is just underlined. Is that word added, Kristen? And, and uh, letter C under 8.03? I'm sorry. Uh, letter C under 8.03 where it says layoffs, it's just underlined. Did we, was that word added? That was already there. Okay. Um, the reason that was added to 803A is because it was already stated in below, which I have now titled as unscheduled leave, but there was a provision in the contract that stated unscheduled sick leave if any sick leave requested less than 24 hours prior to the start of the normally scheduled shift. So that was considered unscheduled sick leave. 
and you may do that um, up to seven times in a 12 month period for unscheduled sick leave before you may be subject to disciplinary action. But that's not a new term in the contract. Where was that you just read the question? You jumped down to what is now titled unscheduled leave. Right. What is not stricken was existing language in the contract, but I clarified it to 803A is intended, intended to be for scheduled requests for sick leave, and then if you have unscheduled leave, if you have seven, more than seven occurrences, then you may be subject to disciplinary action. Yes, so that's, and you said you just made a note to change it to scheduled sick leave for 8.03, correct? That's what we mentioned a few minutes ago. We, we made that interpretation. It was supposed to be for scheduled only at least 24 hours in advance. Well, yes. Okay. Uh, but, but that's not, my point being, that's not a new, for, new term of the contract. I just added that up here, which was stated down here, and now we're calling that unscheduled versus scheduled. Okay. So that's the clarification. Okay. Fair enough. Um, letter D under 8.03. Everything underlined there, full-time bargaining unit members, death occurs in the line of duty. The county will pay 100% of all unused sick leave of the employer's regular work, work agreements on that. Um, okay, 8.04, under the unscheduled sick leave as it's listed, you see the language okay, change. This is unscheduled leave. This is unscheduled leave, correct. So it could be annual or sick, but yes, it would apply to sick leave. Um, that use, it was gonna be who accrue in excess of, because we had that definitive date that we brought up where one said, we couldn't figure out, is it on the seventh one or is it now on the eighth one because it says in excess of. So now we have who accrue in excess of yeah, seven yeah, to sense. make it a yeah. definitive number so everybody's on the same page. But that can't be, uh, you said any leave. Meaning, if you ask for it with less than 24 hours notice, then that's considered unscheduled leave. Okay. Yes, and that would apply, I don't know why it wouldn't apply to annual and sick. Leave. Well, our annual leave policy currently states that it has to be put in seven days in advance, yeah, so which, that kind of. So it's, it's it, okay, it basically wouldn't apply, but it's like, well, it would if this happens and you try it, but the thing is, is you would just be denied <laughs> because it's not within the parameters. So I, I, I get what she's saying. That does make sense. I, and, and there could be, I would think that. there could be an incident where, and I use this all the time because it actually happened to me. My house got struck by lightning, so um, had to get an electrician out who couldn't come until the next day, so I ended up calling into work. The, the leave was approved um, because there was an extenuating circumstance. And it did not go in seven days in advance, but it was approved. Obviously. Of an <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And, well, and, and I that, do use that as an example, sure. and I think that well, depending that, that on has your happened situation, too. That has you know, happened. That, that, so. that type of leave could be approved as well. So it's unscheduled, but... And we, but I want to say we added something in for emergency unscheduled leave emergency. For instances like that. Um, the emergency yeah. leave if there's added. an existing policy that applies to annual leave and you have to ask it for it seven days in advance, then I suggest that we make this 803E unscheduled sick leave limit this paragraph to sick leave. It sounds like you've already got a policy to address that. Yeah, that we, do, we do, which there's yeah. another section here that's going to cover that when it comes to leave time. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, so let's just, I can add back where, where I struck uh, sick leave and leave and, and make it a, make this 803E unscheduled sick leave. Okay. I think that'll provide a little more clarity. Yeah. Okay. Um, one, two, uh, okay, and I'm sorry, 802D does state that requests for annual leave shall be made not less than seven days in advance. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That was my mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, so that was it for the section um, 8. Article 9, personnel records. Um, Oh, since there's no subsequent, so it's just the first A and B. Um, but that was uh, stricken out to say there shall, um, I mean, we're good with that. You can see the only language change upon request. All bargaining unit members will have the right to review and or receive a copy of his or her own official personnel file. 
Um, the other part was just to clean up some language so that it's just not duplicative of saying what it already says in the first part of the sentence. Okay, Article 12, wages, rates, supplemental, differential pay. Uh, so we have we have a few questions, um, starting with 12 on one wage rates. Um, so that's, uh, so we have okay. So we we have the wage rates in your proposal as as you have given it to us, and then of course you see what we put in there with the rounded rates as far as we had talked about, because that had never been changed until the new uh, the new ratification of this, this and contract. I had, I had sent it multiple times to your union president, um, and he never signed it and sent it back, where all the other union presidents had signed it and sent it back. I had sent it multiple times and just never got a copy of that back for just the rounded rates for the rounded scale that went uh, September 21. So the first question we have is, uh, of course, the rates that are listed on the one that you gave us, we knew those had been, you know, obviously needed to be updated, but with the one I'm looking at with the 1375 and the 1796, moving up to the current rates that you're asking for, the ones underlined on your document that you gave us. Uh, the first question we have is, um, have you done an evaluation of what the cost of that is, just generically to? No. Okay. Uh, the second question we have um, is, have you done comparables with wage rates for those same positions um, to kind of determine how you came to those hourly rate evaluations? No. You have no. Um, so a couple of things that we looked at, just so you have an understanding in, in some of the numbers that we've looked at. Um, June 1st, I will officially be here two years. So I'm going back to June 1st of 2021, which are the numbers you provided to us, the 1375 yeah. and the 1796. Shortly after I started, there was an MOU that got a, a pay increase to um, some new numbers. Uh, which the 1796 went to about 19 something an hour, and the 13 I think went to about 15 something an hour. For, um, but by the so way, the rates that in our proposal that are lined out, yes, those are the rates that are in the collective bargaining. Correct, and, correct. And yep, I, we're aware. And it's understood that they were yes, subsequently, absolutely. you know, increased. Yes, so absolutely, are, absolutely. Right. But the reason I'm going for those numbers is is to show you a timeline. So June 1st of 2021 was mm -hmm. my first day here. Those are the rates they were at. Right. And then the current pay rates, as listed in the copy we gave you, uh, respectively, if you look at the full-time EMT position to where they are now, that was a $4.58 an hour increase for a total of 24%. And when, when were those put in place? Those were put in place uh, the first part of 2022, correct? Was when that was actually done. Do you have the date on that? March of 2022. March of what is it? Crystal March of 22. March. So from June 1st, to March of, 20, uh, of 2021 to March 1st of 22. Uh, that first full-time position had a $4.58 an hour increase for a total of 24%. The EMT relief position had a $6.49 an hour increase for a total of 32%. The full-time paramedic position had a seven dollar, I'm sorry, go ahead. So just so I can make the notes, could we go, but start with the first one? Yes, absolutely, okay. please, I, I will go, I see your writing, sir, so. All right. So that first one. It was four dollars and. Four dollars and 58 cents an hour increase from the 1375 up to the, to what they're currently at at 1833. Now there was that MOU in between, but they happened so close together, I'm not, right, gonna, right. we're just gonna go total. And that amounted to That, that is a 24% increase, yes sir. And then, and then the, the next one relief. is the relief, yes sir. That is a $6.49 an hour increase to where they currently are, okay. uh, which is a 32% increase. Okay. The full-time paramedic 
was increased $7.36 an hour for a total of 29%. And the relief paramedic base pay was raised to nine was raised a total of $9.45 an hour for a 34% increase. Now the additional piece that we've looked at is the current pay rates that they're at now and the pay rates they're requesting. And we did the same numbers. With your new rates for the full-time EMT, they're now asking for a $4.46 an hour increase, which is a 19% change. EMT relief is asking for $3.94 an hour for a 16% total increase. Full-time paramedic is asking with your new request for $3.77 more per hour for a total of a 12% increase from the current rate. And then lastly, the relief paramedic position is asking for $2.85 per hour, which is a 9% increase. So in putting those two numbers together, from June 1st of 2021 until now, if this were to come to fruition, the full-time EMT position from their base rate as of June 1st, 2021, would have gotten a 43% pay raise. The relief position would be 48% for EMT, sorry. The full-time paramedic would be 41% and the relief paramedic position would be 43%. That is just on the base hourly rate changes and does not include... The 246. Yes, it does, those rates I gave you with these changes does not include the 246% that they were given in October of 2021 or the 4% that they got in October of 2022. We did not even include that. So those numbers would pretty much, depending on the employee, be... The, some of them could be closer to a 50% or more rates, depending on where they are. Um, okay, so at this time, with the significant pay raises in that short amount of time, we are not entertaining, we're not entertaining the increase in the pay raises at all, or the 10, 15%. Next one, yeah, ship differential 12.03. Um, our language, we're keeping it as is, the 6 p.m. to 6 instead of 5 to 5. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Let me just revisit one, one thing. Please, please the, do. Um, make sure that I, I'm, I'm reasonably certain I understand how people are paid here. Mm -hmm. But everybody, you don't have a scale with the people as they accrue seniority, they get increases, all they get is the across the boards. We don't have longevity. Okay, correct. But you also don't have steps on the salary scale. Anybody who what is a paramedic relief is currently making twenty-seven dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, relief. Yes. 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 Relief paramedic twenty-seven okay. forty-four. Yes. Then how does the if the, everyone is currently making twenty-seven forty forty-one mm -hmm. versus the 1796 that we're making, you know, in March of 21. Mm -hmm. That's a certain amount of money and a certain percentage. So with the two percent and the four percent increases that everybody, re those those are either reflected in the current rates. No, or they didn't happen. No, that so. Those are the base rates. These are just the right. base rates. So let me give you an example. Right. Maybe this will help. So. I've been here X amount of right. years, and I was making, let's say, um, relief paramedic, right. right? It went to 27.44, up from 17.96, mm -hmm. right? So, depending on whatever had happened previously, mm -hmm. and it, it's easier to use full-time positions because right. you have people with longevity, so right. someone may be closer to the base rate than this person who just started so when we take them up to the new base rate, 
it's a much bigger jump for this person, right, than it is for this person right. because they've been here longer, right. but they're both going to go to that base rate. That's just the reflected changes here in percentage. What is not reflected is those employees then got either 2%, 4%, or 6% on top of those base changes okay. based yeah, on their years of service. But we did not add that into this because what's being requested is the base rate and we're just discussing the base, base rate. rate. All right, base okay. Rate. Mm -hmm. it, does that clarify? Did yeah. it? Okay. It does. Um, okay, 12.03. Um, we're just requesting to keep it as is with the six to six as well as the $2 for the weekday and then the additional dollar on the weekend which takes it to three. Um, that's all underlined there in that. Um, Field training we added, but we added it at the rate that they're currently receiving it. Yes. Yes, dollar fifteen hours. I have to compare both. Um, Article fifteen. So I'll. I know you had changed fifteen oh two to something else. So we'll, to keep it. Clear, do you want us to just discuss it as you presented it when we get to that and just go down to the other articles under 15? Is that sure. easier? Okay. Um, 1503, holidays. Um, you'll see the underlying portion there. Holiday pay shall be calculated at the employee's regular rate based on pay based on the number of hours of the employee's regularly scheduled shift. Holiday pay shall not count as hours worked for the purpose of calculating overtime. Requests to be off duty on a designated holiday will be granted on a first come first serve basis. Uh, basically, just meaning as discussed before that county policy. county policy. If you if you work end up working more than however many hours are scheduled for that shift, you're still going to receive holiday pay for the hours you were scheduled for, not for what you actually worked. Fifteen oh six. Let me give you just a. a a brief background on this if you're not familiar because I had to go through a lot of work on this one to make sure because there is a new House Bill 1387 that has just come out and we wanted to make sure that how it applied to us and some of the language and things so if you read through there what we're asking and I want to make sure I'm clear that you understand what it is we're saying we're going to do we're good with paying the recertification fees for EMTs and paramedics if you look the language we did though is it after accruing two years of seniority, so two years of service, um, just to make sure we have someone that's going to stay with the organization. Uh, but the other piece, what we've had issue with is, you know, we have the Target Solutions uh, platform that sends out countless notifications all the way down to 90, 60, 30, 15, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1 days, letting you know you need to recertify. And what has happened is we have employees that will wait to the last minute, of course, you know, they're on accord, go through the process, uh, apply to the state. We know that when the state put, you, you can see your recertification number on the state website before you ever get the card in the mail. But what had happened previously was we could not validate that. So we had employees that waited after till the December one expiration, could not prove either by computer or with a card that they were certified so they were not allowed to work because they couldn't prove they met the qualifications for their position. So the language that we're adding is you will need to provide your reader recertification, basically application that you're sending to the state. Basically show us you've got it all together and you've done it by October 1st. And the reason is that gives us that period of time to get through and make sure everything's validated and good for reimbursement for this. It's going to be a reimbursement. You'll, you'll apply, you'll go through the process, you give everything back, we say, okay, great, you follow the steps, you got it to us by October 1st, you'll now be reimbursed for your recertification. And the reason for that is, is it keeps us away from that December 1st deadline that we all fall under because it just makes it very difficult. So that was the only reason we added that piece. And basically what you're going to do is you're just going to provide it um, the easiest ways to the training division. Hey, look, we got our stuff, it's being submitted, you get in by October 1st, no problem, submit it, when you get your card, give it back. And then you can be reimbursed for the cost of your EMT or paramedic. Yeah. Any questions about that? Does that seem pretty clear? What else? Okay. Oh, that's under a different article where we discussed that. I see, because we made new articles. So. Um, that's good. Articles. No, nothing in 16, no changes. Just clean, yeah, clean up of language in 17, obviously, by direct deposit. You'll see that's underlined there took out those titles, and then of course 1702 is, you know, no, uh, that's that's not by choice, that's, that is how it has to be. Obviously, 
So that's just a removal as we discussed before. We don't have any for Article 17. Having it say by direct deposit rather than saying in Section 2, yeah, we, Fair we, enough. Can, we can tentatively agree to Article 17 also. That's okay. Uh, no changes in probationary period under Article 18. And neither did we did. We proposed nothing there either, so right. we can tentatively agree okay. to Article 18. Nineteen is just the duration of agreement. There. Article twenty again, no, no changes there with any of that language. And we didn't propose anything there either. So again, we can obviously we can't TA Article nineteen because we don't know what the dates are going to be. Yet. Sure, but no, we uh, we can tentatively agree to Article twenty. Okay. Anything after that, um, but I want to make sure we cover it. Oh, uh, by the way, our insurance also Article 16. We, did we propose anything there, Mike? Thank you. I don't think we did. I don't, I don't no, we didn't. Anything, but so okay. we can we can tentatively agree to Article because neither side is proposing anything there, so we can okay. agree to that. Uh, moving past Article, are you ready? No, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah. So moving to Article 21, that was where Article 15, you guys had suggested the new right. Article 21. Right. Um, we are going to keep everything as it is in the uniform policy. Um, we don't have, yeah, we have not, we are not agreeable to any of the changes in that new, new article for uniform under Article 21. which was relief employees again um, we feel those are um, very specific with changes to operations and the needs of the department and staffing um, so we're not at this point as far as for putting in something as an article in the CBA um, interested in entertaining any of that and the same with article 23 on the inner facility and out of town transfers all the specifics on that we're not interested in entertaining anything in that article as well at least for articles under the CBA. Okay. I'm happy to answer any questions, and if you don't have any, we'll go ahead and caucus and let you guys discuss. And yeah, why don't Why don't we go ahead and caucus? Um, okay. <clears throat> obviously, we we have some significant differences in our in our proposals, but I think what we can do during our Caucus because we only have until noon time today, right? We're scheduled. Oh, I think till I think three. We're scheduled till three. Oh, it's as three. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I thought it was only for three hours. But okay, so we have more time then. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. I think your original request was for for two four-hour sessions, and we felt like the first session we're just going to come together and take the articles. Right. And, okay. You know, there wasn't a need for a lot of negotiation in that first session, so we gave you a little extra time right. in this. Okay, some clarification for you, because I did want to talk about this and I, I we skipped over it. Uh, Article 8 under leaves. 8.02, uh, it's going to end up being number 4. Kind of goes over to the second page there. So one of the language pieces you wanted to add was the employee must be notified 72 hours before scheduled right. leave, whether the leave is denied or approved. So let me explain something because there, I think there's an issue here that's, that's not being looked at. 
So we use our Telestaff system for our scheduling, notification of open shifts, et cetera, as well as Telestaff, when your leave is approved, will send the employee notification of their approved leave. And to make sure that's working, we tested that with six different employees this past week just to make sure it's going through and there's not an issue. Where we, lie, where we run into an issue is, rather than employees utilizing Telestaff for what it, what it does, you can go into your schedule and set your calendar up to tell Telestaff don't call me for any overtime because I don't want to be bothered. But what happens is, is employees say, oh, this phone's ringing off the hook, it's calling me all the time. Telestaff only has, and I validated with IT, about five different numbers. Once you block all five of those numbers, you now block Telestaff's complete ability to notify you of anything. So not only are you voluntarily saying, well, I don't want to be bothered with all these open shifts, but if your vacation gets approved, you won't get the notification of that either. And that shouldn't be incumbent upon the supervisor to have to call everybody and tell them. Now, I do agree that, and, and, and maybe this can be a, a language thing on how we do this so we understand it. I do agree that, you know, you plan trips, you got money put into this time off, you need reasonable notification. The other thing is, though, there is no such thing as a denial of your vacation, and let me tell you why. When you put in for leave, you get that asterisk in Telestaff that is put by your name but let's say you're the third person requesting, so there's already two other people off and you don't get approved. Well, what we just had happen this past Monday, within the time frame specified, an employee who had leave said, you know what, I don't need those days, take me off the calendar. Well, automatically, the next person on there that still has the asterisk beside their name now becomes the next person approved and gets the leave and they will be notified. But if we deny it, your name and your request completely deletes from that and there's no way the supervisor can now go back and remember, well, who was that that wanted to leave that day? nor should they. So and rather the, and than the employee, denying... And the, and the employee could see that and would be aware? That, that is correct because... That their name was deleted, so therefore they did not have their request approved? That is correct because once it's denied, <coughs> that asterisk and request of leave beside your name goes away. So that it would be incumbent for the memory of the supervisor to remember, oh yeah, there was someone else who put in that day, I don't remember who it was. It's not helpful, so what we do is just leave it there. As long as there, there's an asterisk beside your name, you know it's not approved. And we made sure that all operations employees can see the same daily roster that anybody can. So you can look and go, oh yeah, I see employee A and employee B are already off that day, it's approved. Looks like I'm third in line. Um, so if one of them by chance cancels, I might be up for it, but that's a what if, rather than just outright denying it and your request goes away. And, and that's. I think that's sufficient, that works. I think the problem that we added the 72 hours in is that they weren't ever getting approved. And I agree with that. I agree, I, I will tell you-, you Am I one off of the, or not, you didn't know. Correct, and I will tell you one of the things that I would like to work towards, and it's not really something for the CBA, it's more for a policy. I would like to see us start getting our calendar, our rosters, 28 days in advance with everything. That's how it was where I came from because February has the shortest number of days, that's why we picked February. Because then you can look that far in advance and go, all right, everything's been approved that far out. If I still have the asterisk beside my name, I, I didn't get in ahead of everybody else because it's first come, first serve. But you know you're there hanging going, well, I may plan for that. That's still three weeks away. Let's hope maybe one of them cancels. You never know. And then we don't have to try to figure out who did that. I think that's a maybe a fine mix of Yeah, and I think or. where it was stemming from was more or less the situations where it wasn't because there was we were already maxed out on the number of people on leave sure. that day. Sure. It's situations where leave is being put in and it's yeah. just sitting there sitting, and it's sitting, not sitting, sitting, getting. Sitting. So I'll, I'll be honest, you, you were. No, it's asterisk in the oh. system. Oh, it's yeah. Just, they just didn't go in here. Right. If the leave hours, if you want to go yeah. off of the two per right. shift, yeah. is available. Okay. It's just that no one's going in and approving it. So they're just kind of in limbo until. Yeah, do, do I know? Do I not know? Right. Yeah. I, I would say to be consistent with language. Um, the, with the policy of, uh, what is it, no less than seven days, I would, I would be amendable to seven days notification, at least. You guys are asking for 72 hours. I'm saying they should notify you at least seven days in advance if your leave's been approved, absolutely. Yeah. Tell us that. Through Telestat, yeah. yes, not not to no, call no, you. I don't need to call you. Right. But, right. but yeah. I mean, it's listen, if you're trying to make, you know, I gotta get a flight, I gotta book yeah. a whatever, that, that leaves you in limbo going, I'm trying to spend some money here, I don't know which way to go. I think that would be fair, you know, seven days at least to go, eh, that's enough time, and then, you know, obviously, 
I would say it's incumbent upon the employee. If you're going to plan a huge vacation, try to get that done much further in advance. Yeah. That's where the 90 day, like if you put right. it in 90 days in advance. That's where I was going those, with that. Yeah. That's why that and clause was added in. Absolutely. And so I just wanted to clarify that. So when you caucus, you realize I agree with you, but we don't want to deny it. And then now that's going to cause you dismay and totally remove your request. Okay. Okay. I think that was the only one I forgot about. Sorry. Yeah, I think. Okay. Uh, was it? Yeah. And on the case on Monday, I believe. I mean, I don't know if we're allowed to say names or not. Are we talking about a week ago? That. The, 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 just somebody canceled the, the, leave and then the leave became available, but the person was already working, so they said, "I'll just stay." So well, if they I, went home, they're that's okay, right? If. Because like in, in a case of something that happened the other day, somebody canceled leave and said, no, I'm just going to come in. Now, I don't know if it was all in telestaff right or whatever. I just know that there was a, requ a request made. I don't okay. know if everything yeah. was correct. To cancel but their leave. But then somebody, the, the second time. person canceled their sh leave and said, I'll just come in. And then the third person who was in line was told when they got to work, hey, you, you could, you're the second person up now. They would have been able to just leave if they wanted to, right? Because That's correct. That's last minute, but as long as it, you know, it, it may take a, hey, listen, this just came up now, so it gives us a chance to move partners and so on and so forth. But absolutely, because okay, they were the second person and they were. That's correct. Okay. And that's why I say if we do that on that seven day, then we should never have that issue unless just like yeah. something wonky happened with the system. And then it's like, well, hey, it is what it is. But they canceled, so here you go. I just want to make sure that that person would now get in trouble because they're leaving. Absolutely not. No, it's, on it's still within. 30 seconds before no, work. And here's why because person. you had already had your leave request in there and yep. it was within that time period. Okay. You had no control over the fact that the other employee within the time frame said, you know what? I just don't want today off. I changed my, or that day off. I okay. changed my mind. Then we just move right on down the line. Uh, it's, I think that's quite okay. fair yeah. to do. Yeah, absolutely. Going to caucus. Okay, good. Okay. All set? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, we realized as we started going through, because we, we obviously we're significantly apart on a lot of things. It's going to take us some time to discuss what changes we want to make to the positions that we took our original proposals. And rather than keep you wait, waiting for us, you know, until we reach the three o'clock hour and then we realize that we never were able to get back. I think it would make sense for us to get back together, give you the, the, the responses on the articles three and four and five and six that we were able to, to, to do, I'll give those to you, and then just set dates, and then we'll, we'll meet amongst ourselves for the rest of the day and figure out exactly what we want to do. Could I ask, by the way, that Vicki, could you send us your proposals, email them to yes. us? So that, yes. Um, you, you have Mike's email address? I do. Okay. And I did revise eight to address what we discussed about being excused. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Unscheduled. Yeah. yeah. Great. So if you, you, you could send that also yeah. to revise Article 8. And that, that way I can have, by our next session, I can have, you know, formal written counters to what you sent and whatever amendments we're going to make to the proposals, you know, we version two. you being yeah. cognizant of our time. Yes. Yeah, I just, I hate, I hate when, it, when it happens to me, you know, that the other side goes away for three hours and doesn't say <laughs> anything. Um, but, okay, so, on, obviously articles one and two, you know, we're tentatively agreed on those. On article three, we are going to keep our proposal to amend section 3.05 that, and I want to make sure it's like clarify it on the record. Proposing to change consult to negotiate when it's limited to the language that says policies that impact negotiable terms and conditions of employment. We think it's axiomatic that that triggers an obligation to bargain. All we're doing is change, for the point of purpose of clarification, changing consult to negotiate simply so that there is no question about the obligation of the parties when the county proposes to make changes to policies that impact negotiable terms and conditions of employment. And then 3.07, we made a proposal which wasn't addressed in your response to, uh, could, 
concerning availability of BBC policies. And we're going to retain that proposal because I, I, I can help you with that. Okay. Uh, stand by, because okay. what I had to do is look at what okay. you gave us and what yeah. we have. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, I told you when I was looking, there was another one. Yeah. After we did the one yeah. about the telestep yeah. thing, I was like, I know it's in there. There's another one, and I thought we covered them all, but we didn't. That's what I was listening to. Yes, it's 3.07. 3.07. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yes, and I'm glad you brought this up because, again, it was one we just skipped while we were discussing. So, um, all departmental policies must be located in a single accessible location for all employees. So, departmental policies, we have Power DMS because each employee is responsible for going into Power DMS. We also have... Um, I don't see a DMS policies on Power DMS, just the not. HR policies, the 95-page yeah. HR manual. I don't... EMS policies I didn't see on there anywhere. And, and if they're on there and we're looking in the wrong spot and we can find okay. them, then that would be so. So I, I don't have an issue with this because if you're going to sign for something, you need to be able to. And all the right. stuff that, you, okay. that, that has been sent out since Power DMS so, has been a thing and then we've signed for us there, but yeah. any of the. Well, and the reason I want to use that, or I would suggest we use that, is because everybody can access it versus, uh, meaning you can look at it from whatever computer versus if we try to do like a policy book somewhere, somebody's got to update it, somebody's got to right. make sure they put the yeah. newest copy in, where would we find it? So, we yeah, because this is departmental policies we're talking we about. We are right. fine. Just, just to, not, not, not yeah, yeah. BCC policies. Well, the BCC, policies, you can pull out the web, well, right. website. They're on the RDMS, so, yeah. the HR policies Probably are. some that need to be cleaned up. I'm sure I, there's ours as well, but yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Um, we are fine with using I mean, Power DMS as the system. We just, they're not there. Okay, let me get in there and figure out what's Yeah, so we're fine with using, power, using DMS power DMS as long as the policies are actually on Power DMS. Gotcha. Yeah. Power DMS is fine. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's an easy one. I knew there was one we missed. I tried to look at all of them, but yeah, not so much because okay. it's not here on this one. Okay. All right. Okay, then. Um, article. Article 4, we suggest rather than deleting sections 404, 405, 406, and 407, adding a new section that says something along the lines of, the parties recognize that as of July 1st, 2023, state statutes will not allow the county to deduct uh, union dues. Period. Sorry about that. Um, in the event that state statutes allow such deductions by the county in the future, sections 4.04, 4.05, 4.06, 4 and 4.07 will be in full force and effect. And obviously, I will, you know, I bless you. I will update our I will update our proposal to include that. But that ra in, rather than if for some reason the state legislature decides to restore <laughs> the, the union's right to have dues collected uh, by the, uh, by a public employer, rather than having us have to sit down and renegotiate language on that issue. We just acknowledge now that if it does become permissible in the future, that the existing language will be restored. And section 4.08, uh, orientation. Yeah. Well, it's there. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that, no, no, we, we haven't got, have got there yet. Um, orientations before that. Okay. It's current, it's 4.0 currently, it's, it's so uh, we keep our proposal to, to, to assure that the union is allowed this time. The employees will notify the union 
of the name, start date, and dates of orientation of new hires. Because we wouldn't know to request that information if we didn't realize that there was an orientation schedule. Absolutely, we do that for uh, okay. another we, I don't know if you remember, too. we agreed to that. No, you, it, you gave me Which one are you talking, which number are we talking about? Because well, it's 4.08 it's, it's in the current contract. In your proposal, it yes. doesn't have a, a, a number, it's just orientation. I think the concern is that then it's the county's burden to know whomever's in charge of that responsibility to know that they have to routinely do this and there may be a miscommunication or what have you. Whereas, and, and it's not a problem, I mean, we get these requests routinely from community leadership, that's not a problem, but we just don't want contractually to be obligated to do this on a regular basis without there being some prompting from on your part to, to act proactively request it, whether it's on a monthly basis, you know, every other month, whatever. Let me, let me ask you a question. Um, how far in advance are new employee orientation scheduled? A day. Off the, a day. Thursday a, afternoon, Friday morning. So if you were hire an employee on Wednesday, the orientation is Thursday morning? Monday. So Monday, our orientation days are on the first and third Mondays of the month, of every month. Oh, August okay. 18. We just don't know if it's only an EMS employee, a fire employee, okay. or a communications employee. Or some of the issues are is those those employees, depending on what happens in the processing, mm -hmm. may get so we may get a portion of those mm -hmm. on that Monday, but there may be one or two that because of an issue they can't start till the next one and they get separated. So we don't know they're coming, we just know they're hired and then we get notified last minute. But yeah. I would agree with that because the other issue with that is, and I validated this, is I said, okay, I'm I'm trying because I you know, as you had these requests, I looked into them. I asked, how often in these orientation classes is this happening? And I'm hearing, hmm, not very often. So that's why we would say, rather than it being coming upon us, if we're not doing this very often, just let us know. And if you need word verbiage for that, or which I think is what is initially there, just let us know, we'll gladly tell you. But for us to do it every time, and then they never show up to have this time, it's almost a waste of our, I don't wanna say a waste, but it's just an extra step we don't have to take. So th is there, there's, there's sure no one who knows yeah. whether or not the, an orientation class on that first and third Monday of the month is going to have an EMS. <clears throat> she Pardon. knows about Thursday afternoon, late Thursday afternoon, okay. uh, fr early Friday morning, and that's when she sends out the notification to us. Okay. So, so what we could do is just include you all on the email for mm -hmm. orientation dates of upcoming yeah. um, like paramedics, EMTs, if there are someone scheduled yeah. to start on that orientation date, we can include sure. you on the email. And I'd like to clarify, I'm easiest. not trying and to well. obligate the county from an HR level to do this. I would be fine with the training department sending an email. But that's the problem is we don't always know in the training department, it comes from them and there's times where yeah. we believe absolutely without a doubt this coming Monday, John Smith you know, is starting. Okay. And then John Smith so never shows up. So have, have the yeah. HR department. I'll be honest, that, that would be a good choice. Email because that then would we work know for us. sure. Yeah, uh, just a suggestion. Okay, that would work for us. Okay. Not sure how you're. Yeah. As, as long as we know that. that somebody's coming potentially to EMS and they're yeah. going to be a part of this collective bargaining agreement, Absolutely. that we can have that time in the in-house orientation. Process Absolutely, because you know she does it two to two, so I mean that's the easiest yeah, thing. Yeah, so it could right obviously there. change it to days and stuff. Yeah. Like that. We just and if something comes up, I have no problem with. Hey, remember so and so is supposed to start? Okay, they're going to be next Thursday because this happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so, so you can schedule. So do you all have a specific email address so it won't be addressed to one individual person? Yes. So therefore, okay. Yeah. 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 So you guys have a, a group. We have a, a, a local email. It would be your yeah. local yeah. ad yeah. where. It would be the EMS local. Yeah. EMS local, yeah. Okay. That would be easy. Okay. And then just for clarification purposes, the one hour to address newly hired, we typically use the last um, time frame of the day for you guys to come in and speak about unions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, that makes sense. Rather than, rather than doing it at the beginning of the orientation, right. do it at, at yeah. the last it, block of time. I'm sorry. How it's been handled currently is we are going into the in house orientation portion, and it's worked out with the training department that we ha are going to come in on Thursday at 4 o'clock and we usually try to keep it in the latter part of the day so it doesn't disrupt the day. Right. Um, it's just in the last year or so it's fallen out of pattern um, of us being notified. It was happening previously. Um, I've made some requests for that to continue and I have not been notified in months of any new hire start dates. Are you sending those requests to the training department? Those have been verbal conversations that have been had to okay. notify when 
when we have incoming orientees so that we can schedule that in advance in the schedule. But again, to be clear, is it, it doesn't have to be names, but is it with the training department? Yes. Okay, so again, I would say. It would have to go through my department. It would have to go through her department because even the training department is told you're getting, you know, you're getting six on Monday yeah. and then Monday shows up and we get two. And we're like, what happened to the other four? And even that's fine. I mean, so, it's, But it's we'll not... make sure if you're in that loop directly from them, you'll see it from the beginning in the early right. phases. And then if there's any changes, we'll just go, oh, hey, there's a change. I would also not easy. even be opposed to just being notified if on that day you receive two and the training department knows they're getting two okay. to send an email, phone call, however they want to do it sure. and say, we've received two today. When this week, can you come in and meet with them? That's fine with me. Okay. Um, it doesn't need to be. Uh, Super formal, just make the notification. Right. Right. Just so, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Just so they know. That's, that's yeah. straightforward. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, Absolutely. And in our emails, we do put who is going to be starting on that Monday and then who's tentatively scheduled right. for the following. So you okay. just have All right. preparation. Good. All right. That'll work. All right. Um, and then uh, union leave, we accept your proposal with one addition in the second paragraph. Union officials will not be admitted to take leave. We would like to have that say take union leave. So that's to clarify that that's the kind of, because if an employee wants to submit, you know, a request to use annual leave to, to, to do something, uh, you know, related to the union but not a direct representational function, there shouldn't be any prohibition of them being able to use annual leave. For, you know. Following yeah, yeah. policy. Yeah. All right, and then Article 5, Grievance. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. And Grievance Procedure. That's a grievance. Yes, we haven't started that yet. Yes. We, we go haven't it. started Grievance yet. I know, I'm just making yeah. notes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm in Grievance Procedure. We would accept your proposal, but we would propose two changes. We would propose to insert a step, a, a, a new step two between the current step one and two for the public safety director. Same time frames and same language as there, is, as there is in the current steps, but add, you know, the, the same language from step one. So you almost want like step one, step two, step three? Yeah. Have yeah. Steps? yeah, we just. Rather than going directly from Chief Purcell to the county administrator, we think it makes sense to have a, a step before the county administrator for the public safety director. I mean, is it, is it, I mean, realistically. So you're saying, and I'm just saying what's yeah. listed as yeah. one now, one stays oral discussion. Yeah. <clears throat> two, step one, which goes to me. Right. Three step would go to then the public safety director. Right. Step four then goes to the county administrator. Right. Okay. I'm just yeah. making sure we yeah. have steps okay. involved. Because you have step two, but it's number three. I got okay. it. So, okay. Well, it, in our current yeah. one, I believe the informal. No, step is one is the formal grievance. It's not a step. Yes. It's not a step. Right? Yeah. Could, oral oral is, not, is not a step. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. But that you guys had actually asked to, re to remove that in the other. No, so we, that's I mean, why I wanted to make sure. Yeah, wait, number yeah, one, yeah. which is. Yeah, no, we're yeah, accepting yeah, yeah. your proposal, which okay. would retain that. Okay. 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 Um, I, get, and then, I get what you're saying. And then one other thing in step 3B, where you guys supposed to decrease the 10 days to two, we would propose that that be five days. We, we recognize that 10 days is more time than is really necessary, to, but two oh, days is kind of a short, a short time frame, so we'll propose 10 days. You propose how many days, sir? I'm sorry. Ten, five. Five? Okay. Yeah. And then Article 6 is the only other article that we, um, we were able to come up with anything on and we would propose. We think that the, the adding to a, a section two, currently we, Nikki's talk issue of using BBC, BC, I cannot refrain mm -hmm. from saying BBC, uh, the BCC uh, date of hire for, all, for most purposes that's the relevant date of hire and the width. We keep the current one that reinforces that for the limited purpose of shift assignments, voluntary and involuntary shift assignments, we think specifying that it's time and grade seniority, 
our, I think we think our proposal clearly specifies that it's only for those purposes, but it probably would make sense to add um, another sentence there in two, that in the event of a tie in, in grade, time and grade seniority, that BBC, B, BCC seniority would be used to break the tie. So, with consideration to that, because we had a discussion about what it says in the PBA, um, there is, do you have that language available, Mary? What language? The one about, um, with, do you have it? Okay. Who was the one that you read earlier? Remember? Do personal F. What are you looking for? Control F seniority. Well, that's this whole article. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the section regarding how they prioritized it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. It's converting it to a searchable document. So the way it's written in there for seniority application, their contract, this is the PBA, says except under extraordinary circumstances, unit and shift assignments, shift transfers, and regular days off, vehicles and issuance, now granted they're adding some other things right. in here, uh, uh, vehicle issuance and new equipment shall be made first on a, uh, first on justifiable agency, agency needs. needs, then seniority. And the reason I would ask for that first is because if we are limited to the only time we can move people is on seniority, then when we need to move someone for another reason, we can't. We have to negotiate. But if there's an agency need to move somebody first for a specific reason, whether it's there's not, <coughs> there's not whatever the reason may be, because there's plenty of reasons that may present. Uh, agency needs first and then on seniority. Well, if it's just a simple matter of we've got to move an EMT from this shift to that shift, well, then whoever the most junior EMT is is going to move. But if there's another reason other than something that is not based on seniority, we should have that ability to move said person and not go specifically by seniority because that's not always going to happen. Um, well, I mean, we actually, we're, we're proposing only to, to limit. We're not talking about any of the other things that you just read in the PBA language. Just only voluntary and involuntary shift assignments. So, but, but that's the whole point is specifically to what you put, right. voluntary and involuntary. Involuntary would mean I need to move someone. Based on your limited language, it says I can only involuntary move someone on a seniority basis. But if I need to move someone from a shift who has more seniority than someone else for another reason, that language then keeps me from moving them. Why would you need to move someone from a shift I'm in, involuntarily? So, so, so I'll give you an example. Uh, now, granted, we're changing that through our processes finally. But previously, we only had specific people, paramedics, that were RSI certified. Right? So if I have one shift that's packed with RSI people and another shift that's not, and we realize, listen, we gotta spread the ability until we get the entire department trained, now I have to now I have to move those people. And it may not be able to be based on seniority, it has to be on a, a, a particular credential or skill they have to move them there for that position. And I don't wanna be limited to that because things may change. I mean, there's other things you're asking here for in the contract that we've discussed that we're looking at in the future. There's mention of critical care paramedics eventually. Those things can't always follow by seniority. But seniority would then fall in under the, let's just say, five RSI credential paramedics. Does anybody want to voluntarily move to the shift? No, we've got no takers. Well, then the lowest seniority person gets moved. Well, so there's an additional point you brought up. It doesn't say that either. It just says involuntary and voluntary moves will be by seniority basis. It doesn't say anything about first those willing to move would be moved because we would we would want that language in Absolutely. there as well. So I mean, there's there, there's a there's a mix here. I'm not totally yeah, against I, it. I just want to make yeah. sure we're not. Yeah. I'm not uh, cutting uh, ourselves yeah. off. Yeah. And, no, well, you, you know well, what I mean? Well, well, there's there's say, something what, there. What you say makes sense. Yeah. So when, when we will we will. We just gotta come yeah, with the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna come with the language as well. Yeah. I think we're going for the same goal there. Yeah. We are. I'm just trying to figure out how to get there. Right. And it's a difficult the thing to right outline now. with the circumstances. Right. It is because when you try to come up with the example now, it's like. 
I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. We just are looking for the consideration okay. to be there. When Absolutely. Can we get okay. Yep, I agree. We will, uh, we will look at that. Sure. Up with I agree with you. Something you to propose to you that we think might satisfy everybody's concerns. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Um, and that was all we were able to uh, get <laughs> to work through. That's still and a lot. With, yeah, no, actually it is. Yeah, but there's a lot more. And I think it rather than it's rather than having to sit around yeah. twiddling your thumbs until three o'clock, you know, waiting for us to call it uh, what I'm gonna do is incorporate the revised article eight and I'll put on the header that it's our proposal okay. revised okay. so that when Nikki sends it you've got All right, good. Might come up. 